Names are a big deal in Judaism. They're very precisely chosen and a name always represents for us the essence of what a particular item, event or episode is really all about. So when a name is chosen to represent the parasha of the week, it's not arbitrarily chosen. It is carefully chosen. And not only because it employs a phrase that's near the beginning of the parasha, but really because the name of the parasha will capture the essence of what this Torah portion is actually all about. Which means it's quite surprising that the name of this week's parasha is called Chaye Sora, the life of Sora. It's intriguing because the opening passage of the parasha is the passing of Sora, and then the story of her burial. So how on earth is that the life of Sora? In fact, if you read the rest of the parasha, there are quite a number of themes that emerge that actually seem to undermine her position within the community and possibly even speak of themes that were antithetical to her life. For example, a big chunk of the parasha speaks about the next generation, the next matriarch, the so-called replacement of Sarah, Rivka. Now surely, if you're talking about the life of Sarah, it seems a major distraction to instead celebrate the life of the woman who would take her place. You read in the parasha about the position of Yishmael, that individual who Sarah did everything in her power to remove from the family, to excise his influence over her son, and yet in this parasha he features again. And in this parasha we're told that he even does Teshuvah, which implies that he comes back into the fold, apparently exactly the opposite of what Sarah lived for. In this parasha we see towards the end that Abraham remarries Hagar, now called Keturah, which of course it was a thorn in the side of Sarah. This was the woman who only came into their lives because Sarah was barren. And then of course had to leave their lives because of the association with Yishmael. So everything about this parasha actually seems to be antithetical to the life of Sarah. How do we call it the parasha of her life? Well, we do know in Judaism that life is not measured just simply by the amount of time that a person walks this earth. There is life in the contained sense of 70, 80, 90, 100 years. And then there is life in the sense of what do you live for? What do you represent? Who are you? What it, where is your life? And that then generates a legacy where even after the person is no longer physically living, their life continues. In the language of the Talmud, if your children live your principles, you are still alive. That's what this parasha is about. There were certain core principles that Sarah really established, really invested in. And although the beginning of this week's parasha is that she is no longer here with us, the story of this parasha is how the values and principles that she stood for came to continue and have even greater life even after her passing. So when you hear that the woman her son marries is a woman of her caliber, of her values, as Rashi says, she, Rivka, brings back the miracles that Sarah had brought into the home on a weekly basis, then you know that Sarah is alive, not physically, but in the next generation. And when you read it, that within that particular conversation, you see that Eliezer, who was this incredibly dedicated servant and student of Abraham, is rejected as a possible suitor, or at least that his daughter would be a possible suitor for Yitzchak. That echoes what Sarah said, my son Yitzchak is in a class of his own. He's at a tremendously high level of spirituality and does not deserve to engage with those who are less spiritual to be able to found the Jewish nation. Sarah's values and principles. And when you see Yishmael or Hagar come back and you see how they position themselves within the family, primarily accepting not just Abraham's values and principles, but Dafka Yitzchak's because that's what they were opposed to. And now they sit back and they acknowledge and they say Yitzchak is in fact the true heir to Abraham. And Sarah's life is alive and well. If you had to summarize Sarah's value set and her life in one sentence, it would be the uniqueness of being Jewish as expressed in the uniqueness of her son Yitzchak. This is the week of Chaye Sara, the life and energy of that principle of how special it is to be Jewish. Have a wonderful Shabbos.